<laughs> Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. Thanks for tuning in. And you'll be happy you tuned in today because I'm going to be installing some go fast exhaust on the Type R. Check it out. Here are the parts that I'll be installing today. I picked them up used from a viewer. Uh, I have this Skunk 2 uh, header here. I also have this Tanabe medallion uh, muffler that I'll be installing and a stainless steel B pipe to go with it. The thing about it is, is the B pipe is actually for a Del Sol, which is shorter than my Integra, and I'm going to have to lengthen this pipe a bit to make it work. In fact, we'll have to be doing a few things along the way to make this work. There's one more component I need to show you. In addition to the parts that I showed you, I also picked up a new catalytic converter. This is a MagnaFlow unit. And I failed to mention before, all of this exhaust is two and a half inch in diameter. Uh, but I will need to obviously weld some ends onto this uh, catalytic converter in order to get it up on there. These are some pieces that sort of came along with the parts that I purchased. I'm gonna have to probably modify these in order to make them work. Additionally, in the back of the existing catalytic converter that's on there, which by the way is of a smaller diameter, also it's been hollowed out so it's not functioning anymore and I have a check engine light as a result. But there's an O2 sensor post catalytic converter that I'm going to install in this catalytic converter and for that, I have an O2 sensor bung. I picked up two just in case. These are kind of nice to have around. I don't mind having extras and they're not that expensive, but I'll be installing the O2 sensor bung in the back of the catalytic converter and installing this exhaust on this car. One of the main reasons I'm replacing the exhaust in addition to hopefully increased performance is that the inside of this muffler, which is the original equipment muffler, has broken apart. You can hear it here. You can also hear that sometimes when it's running and well, I find it rather annoying. I also have these other parts ready to go, so why not? Let's install it. One last thing before we tear into this, you probably wanna hear what the stock exhaust sounds like as compared to what the new exhaust sounds like when I'm done. Here's the stock exhaust. You know what that sounds like well let's get the old exhaust off and get ready to uh, graph these new parts up on there job one for me is going to be to remove this lower splash shield as you'll see i've installed a dc sport header on this that i've had for a while which will probably end up going on the gsr this provides quite a bit more access under here there's an o2 sensor the primary o2 sensor uh, that goes into the header I'm going to disconnect that right now. Seems logical to start with the catalytic converter since it's right here. This is the O2 sensor I mentioned and somebody has already really messed up the wiring going into it. Uh, I've already disconnected it from inside the car. The connector is located underneath the dash in front of the console underneath the carpet. Um, here's a shot of it here. So I'm going to pull this through the floor and so that when I disconnect the catalytic converter that I don't stress out the wiring to this sensor. I do plan to keep this exhaust around for whatever reason, nostalgia, whatever. I don't really see a need to disconnect these fasteners because it's just going to come down with the mid pipe or the B pipe anyway. Somebody has already gone in and there used to be a flange here that went to the muffler and replaced it with this smaller pipe. To get this out of here, I'm gonna have to uh, cut it. So I'm gonna cut it right about here and uh, just pull the whole B pipe down and then take the muffler off. Now I'll remove the muffler. And by the way, just a little bit of WD-40 on these hangers makes them work so much easier.
Is it a baby rattle or a muffler? I don't know. Now for the B pipe and catalytic converter. Well, that came down suddenly. Well, they told me it was hollowed out. I mean, it doesn't look the greatest down there. It's got something going on and maybe the backside of it is worse and maybe that's what's rolling around inside the muffler. I don't know. Either way, this is just coming off today. Just to give you some perspective on the upgrade, this will be the new inlet to the new catalytic converter as opposed to this one. Yeah, there's a difference. I don't know. Maybe this has something to do with the check engine light. <laughs> I doubt this will work. I've got my heat at the ready. Heat it is. Like butter. Set this someplace and let it cool. Unrelated, but because I have my torch out and I'm here, I'm gonna take this broken bar off of here. I have a new one to replace it with. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. Because I want to test it, see where it lives, I'm going to put the muffler up in here now. Scratching my head wondering if the rear bumper is going to come off. This thicker stabilizer bar. All right. With this lowered down, let's see if we can get past it. I'm going to pull the rear bumper skin off. It's never easy, is it? All right. Problem I'm having is those hangers kind of not lining up. So I'm going to have to bend these to a more advantageous uh, angle in order to get it to work. This one's going to need to go over a bit. I'm just going to hook this one in so that I'm sure that it can and it can. So what I was doing is I was trying to adjust it. As you can see, it's ever so slightly angled this way. Like I said, this is for a Del Sol, not for an Integra, but I was just able to bend these uh, angers up on both sides to get everything to work. Just a little gentle prying. I think that looks all right though. I mean, it's slightly off, but not by much. Coming around to this side, everything looks perfect. It's not going anywhere. It's not hitting anything. In fact, it's very secure. Now let's get that uh, header off. There's a bracket and a clamp holding the back part of the header up. As far as we can get it for now. In order to uh, get these headers off, I find it's much easier if you remove the uh, slave cylinder. It's just two 12 millimeter fasteners. And this helps the flange get past it so much easier. So I'm gonna do that now. The only thing remaining are the fasteners that hold the header to the cylinder head. Now, I, when I took off the stock exhaust manifold, two of the bolts broke off inside the cylinder head. Well, actually two were already broken when I got there. Uh, this one and this one, uh, one of them just spun right out because part of it was sticking out, but the other was recessed down inside the hole. And, Viewers suggested was to weld a nut to the top 
of, well, whatever remains. And I did precisely that. Now, it took a couple of tries, but this worked, and I was able to spin the uh, remaining stud that was sticking down inside the cylinder head. I was able to get this out without having to do tappy dyeing and all that. So, happy about that. That was a win. This is something that happens to both of my Integras. See how the dipstick is coming in contact with the header tube here? When it warms up, the dipstick loosens up and starts to wander around, um, and I find it like this. Now, I can't move it now, and I'm gonna remove it so I can remove the fasteners, but uh, what I found is if you wanna put this back close to where it was, wait till it gets warmed up and just pull it over and it moves real easy, but when it's cold like it is now, nah, not so much. For now, we'll just take it out. The trick is, take all the fasteners out, save like these two top ones where you can get to them easy. Because if you loosen them all first, the weight of the header is gonna cause them to bind and make it more difficult to remove. I recommend doing this while the engine's cold and not hot. In my experience, when they're hot, sometimes the fasteners will gall inside the cylinder head and break. So to avoid that, I recommend waiting till everything cools down. I prefer to remove them from underneath, which is what I plan to do now. This is where having a slave cylinder knock loose pays off comes right out. Long tube headers usually work mid-range to high RPM, which happens to be where my B18C5 is happy. Here's another place where you'll see a difference, substantially larger. And it's not that I think this O2 sensor is bad, it kind of looks like maybe a Denso or something, but this is an original equipment one and I know it works. Rather than messing around with this one after it gets up on there and perhaps doesn't work, I'm gonna swap these over now. I had it out recently. I was confident that it would come out. I literally really just put this header on this car. There we are. This is a Skunk 2 Alpha header that I see embossed on the outside of this. Oh, nice. All right, we'll save you for later. A little bit of anti-seize on the threads. Okay, a lot of anti-seize on threads. <laughs> Knowing that this sits a little farther back, I've got my fingers crossed that the wire is going to be long enough. Let's see if this will work. Cool. Hope I didn't damage this gasket too badly. I don't think I did. Looks like this will bolt up. So, B-series for the win. I do have some ARP exhaust studs that may be employed at some point. The plan is eventually this engine will come out and we'll do some stuff to it and then put it back in. I haven't even bolted it down and it looks wicked. Nothing has been secured up top yet. I wanna see if I can sort out this bracket. All I'm going to need to do is find myself a nut and bolt. I'm going to tighten it up to the engine first before I tighten this up, but it's all hanging and ready now. All right, when I tightened it, I went from center out. I like to do that so that it lays up even. Good on oil. Before I put the slave cylinder back onto its mount, I'm gonna lubricate the end of this ball with a little bit of anti-seize. Uh, that will help prevent a squeak when you step on the clutch pedal. Well, I can see that doing a clutch is gonna necessitate removing the uh, header. That's pretty darn close down there. But man, it looks sweet. Now the bracket and O2 sensor. Ooh. All right, so I'm not gonna hook it up to the clip because it stretches the wires too much. It's just a little bit too short. And now we build. I need to go from here all the way down to here. 
For starters, I kind of want to get a feel for where this B pipe is going to live. So I know how much length I need to put into the catalytic converter. I know the B pipe's short, but this way I'll at least be able to figure out how much room I've got to work with with the cat. Kind of looks like I'll have just enough room, like just. I think a next step is I will come in here and cut this pipe so that this can come to rest where it's supposed to be. I'm just gonna mark where that's gonna be and make that cut. Looks like I might have to, have to add a little bit of pipe to there also. Start by cutting that one about there. I like that. Let's see what this other end looks like. That's also gonna need a little bit of extending. Let's start with that catalytic converter, but this is also gonna have to get cut back here to make this work. Serious metal here. So whenever you weld, you want a clean surface to weld against. And there were also some burrs down in here that I took care of. A couple of things I've noticed about this flange. Um, it was never like welded on here, right? It's sort of sideways. Also, so the way this fits on here, there's a bit of a gap and it sticks out a bit. In fact, too far. Um, you might notice down inside there, there's a, a ridge. I plan to grind off the welds on the outside of this and get it down to that inner portion so that I can weld that onto the catalytic converter. To accomplish this, I'm gonna grind off all of these welds here. See if I can get this outer pipe to come off. Switching to face shield. Here's what remains. I was hoping to get the lip that was on the inside of this, but I didn't manage it. Uh, but we're welding, so no big deal. I'm gonna clean up these rough edges and then get it ready to secure to the end of the catalytic converter. I looked, I don't see any arrows or anything on this, so I don't think direction of flow is an issue. They just marked this as the top, I think obviously because there's a heat shield up here. I just saw this right here. So direction of flow is it doesn't matter. You can go through either way, apparently. This is what I'm left with. Plan is to just tack it in place for now. I tacked it there. And I tacked it there. I'm pretty well lined up on the inside. Don't worry about the gap. I'll fill that in when I weld. For now, it's in place. Still has a little bit of movement to it. Let's see what kind of fitment we get here. Here's my setup. I got things sort of bolted down. These spring bolts are too short for this. I may have to go and seek out some longer ones, but uh, for the moment, I can continue working. I've got the flange bolted up to the catalytic converter, and I've got everything sort of in place. I've got another uh, holder there. So positioning, super important. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, tack weld this into place. I'm gonna put the O2 sensor in after, once I get everything sorted, but first I'm gonna tack weld this into place. Well, all right, we are officially this far. Tack welded into place anyway. I've repositioned the jacks down here. I'm gonna lay that pipe where I think it needs to go. Take some measurements, cut a couple of pieces of pipe, weld it together. We'll be done. Well, we gotta put the O2 sensor in, but that ain't hard. This is what I've come up with. It seems to exist in that space well. 
Now I'm going to measure and cut pipe to fit. It's like I'm just a shade over six inches here. See what we got. I think I'll do this in two parts. First part will be the end. Out of here. Here's the setup. Once again, there's a gap I'm gonna have to fill. I'm gonna tack weld that into place. I think I might have forgot to press record, sorry. Anyway, it's tacked there and there. Looks like that now. I think that's it. We're good here. Now I just gotta bridge this gap. This one is almost dead on four and a quarter. So I've added about 10 inches. Nailed it. This job done as far as the fabrication side. Now we got some welding to do. Oh, let's figure out where that O2 sensor goes. What I'm most concerned about here is the angle and location. I want to make sure that it screws in and doesn't interfere with anything. I also have the shift linkage to contend with, but anyway, I'm going to do this with two hands, figure out where it goes, mark it so that I can remove it and uh, get it placed. Now everything comes off and gets welded. Oh no, my arch nemesis a rock. <sighs> really didn't want that to happen. Well, after this little incident, I decided to go home, take a break, eat, sleep, come back the next day, and I'm glad I did. I feel rested and ready to tackle this. So let's get started. As long as everything is back off the car, I'm going to work on this secondary O2 sensor. This was my mark when it was up in the car, so I know that I'm angled out right about here in this area. I'm gonna drill a hole and uh, get ready to install the bung, which I believe will be about like this. So I'm only gonna tack it into place and I'm gonna put the O2 sensor in it. Well, I'm gonna put it up there and I'll put the O2 sensor in it and see if I can find the right space for it or the right angle. If I need to angle it, I still have a little bit of leeway here. And then uh, fully weld it into place when I do the rest of the welding on it. Before I go too far with this, I'm gonna angle it down so that the shavings don't go into the substrate. See, I've got this ability to sort of rock this back and forth a little bit. I've got a little leeway as far as where it can go. But this way, I can put it up on there, get an idea of exactly where I want it to be, tack it into place once again and take it back off. I'm glad all this is happening at the back. I'm gonna file this hole real quick before I go any further. I don't like sharp edges and burrs. This will also give me the opportunity to try out a couple bolts. I got some longer bolts. I had these in stock and they look like they're going to work so much better. If I have to get a pair of pliers out to install these, the bolt's too short. It also didn't seal well. This seal needs to flex because the engine's going to move up and down. That's why they use this donut gasket up here. Uh, and that's why they use these spring clamps. So it really just holds tension. It doesn't securely, well, it securely fastens, but just in a different way than you might imagine. Yeah, I think that's gonna work out a lot better. And you can see, maybe see how that pivots a little bit there. That's how that's supposed to work. Cause the engine's gonna be doing this as I uh, shift. 
especially under hard acceleration. That is awesome. Looks like I'll need some better washers, but I can solve that in a minute. Anyway, let's do what we came here to do. And there's what I did. I wanted to make sure that it didn't hit the shift linkage or anything up in here. I think it's in a good spot there. And I'm not exactly sure where this will land. I have to get the rest of the pipes on here to find out. I think that'll work out fine. Got to turn it on first, Eric. Not wanting to repeat the same mistake as last time, I'm gonna go around and, and add more secure tacks to all of this so that when I remove the pipe, even if I drop it, um, hopefully it won't come apart again. But I think we're there. Now let's take it all off, weld it together. What I like so much about this is unbolting everything. Everything stays where it is. It's not like I'm forcing it into place. It's nice knowing that it fits exactly, which is why I went through all this trouble. I try to learn lessons. Got it in one piece. Let's weld some stuff. That piece was thinner than this back piece. It took a little bit more smoky welding fun. Yeah, that's ugly, but like I said, this, this piece was a bit thinner. I'm gonna have to go in to this side and actually do some grinding to make this uh, flattened out again, but I'll wait till that cools. While we're waiting for that, uh, we can do the other pipe. I'm gonna start by making all these welds stronger on the top, and then I'll put it in the vise and start spinning it around. Are they the prettiest of welds? No, but I feel I'm getting better. I know it's, uh, well, not gonna leak. Well, I'm confident it's not gonna leak anyway. Now the plan is to come in here, clean this stuff up, smooth it all out, and get it ready to install. Well, <clears throat> I hope that surface will work. Now that things have pretty much cooled down, I'm going to do something that I got from the exhaust shop. They do this uh, and paint all of my welds and, and any of the shiny bare metal uh, with this paint, which will help prevent corrosion in the future. Well, the paint dried, I cleaned up a little bit, but it's dry now. I think we're ready for some reassembly. Start with a catalytic converter and O2 sensor. Anti-seize on these threads, of course. There's one more thing that I added off camera. This upper fastener is really difficult to get a wrench on, so I just tack this bolt onto the top here so that uh, at least with this one, all I have to do is run the nut down on the other side. I'm gonna go grab another washer for the inner part of those bolts. So I'm concerned that these bolts, see the shank down here, when it comes into contact with the uh, back of this, 
I want to make sure that it doesn't fall down inside that hole, so I'm going to get a washer to go in between there. I'm using two washers on the outside. That stud sticking out is also helpful for that. Truth be told, these used gaskets may not work out and I may need to get some new ones. Everything went together really well. It's always awesome after doing this kind of work for things to go together like that. Slide right in with it just hanging there. That was the reason why I spent all that time and effort trying to make sure everything was right. It's secure, it's routed correctly, it's freaking beautiful. All right, I'm gonna tie up the stabilizer bar, put this stuff back together. I don't have to do that, let's start it up. Cause it'll go back up in the air so I can check for leaks anyway. It's tucked up under there nicely. Like you don't even really notice it. I like that about it. All right, let's start it up. Well, I like it already. It's not all loud or anything. It sounds so good. I am super happy that this is not fart can soundy. Oh yeah. I don't hear any leaks or anything. Oh, that's just oil burning off of it. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Let's get it up in the air and check for leaks. Oh man, I'm happy. Many times with leaks, when you first start it up, you'll see like condensation. I hear a little bit like here. Around this. And that may require a new gasket. I can actually see a little bit coming out here. So this will probably require a new gasket for this to seal. If this is good. I don't hear anything around the O2 sensor. Just up here. Back here, like a teeny tiny drop, but nothing here. I love that deep, rich tone. Hear that? I like that a lot. Well, I'm happy to report that the only thing I'm concerned about is getting a new gasket into here. Otherwise, we're good. Yes. I'm gonna bring this thing down, turn it off, bolt everything back up, then we'll take it for a drive. Well, putting the front lower splash shield back on, I saw that these pipes are almost touching. So I'm gonna try to avoid this melting or catching on fire. I'm just gonna come in here and just cut a larger opening to accommodate this. There's a the final answer. I know I'm messing up an original equipment part, but it's better than catching it on fire. Well, she's all buttoned up. Let's take it for a drive. with the last clip it didn't have an accurate representation of how the exhaust sounds inside the car and there was a bit of wind noise in that clip so I decided to give you this now this is similar to a run that I did in another video so if you want to hear what this sounds like with the old exhaust I'll link that down in the description for you uh, but right now we're just cruising along and it's quiet it's it's not loud this is exactly what I wanted I didn't want a loud car this car attracts enough attention, I didn't want to attract any more unwanted attention, but 
What we're going to do is we're going to rip around my favorite little stretch of road in second gear and you'll be able to hear what the exhaust sounds like now, which we're getting to right now. Oh, and yes, my oldest son gave me the uh, Type R t-shirt. I got to wait. There's traffic. Um, my oldest son gave me this Type R t-shirt. So I'm going full nerd at the moment in the, uh, in the Type R. All right, so this is what the exhaust really sounds like. Hit fuel cut. Much, much better. I absolutely love it. It's quiet when it's quiet, but when it wants to be loud, when it needs to be loud, when I need to hear VTEC kicking in, yo, I hear it. Big smiles. Back to you, Eric. I think what this is, is a combination of the new catalytic converter and also, uh, well, there might have been moisture or dust on the inside of this exhaust. Who know, knows how long it was sitting around? I think this is just stuff that's burning off. Um, hopefully it won't take too long to uh, dissipate and go away. Giving you a final once over after that drive. So far, everything looks good. Small exhaust leak here, maybe. Teeny tiny like at these welds, like super small. Nothing I'm concerned about, nothing I really hear. I love this thing, absolutely love it. So my upgrades here were not without issue. You might be able to notice a very small exhaust leak that I've got going on here. You can hear that one. The other pinholes from the welds, I don't really hear those and I can go back and clean those up later, but anyway. Um, I'm going to blame this header pipe because you can kind of see to where it curves down a little bit here. I think that's part of it, but before uh, I installed this, this flange was all bent up. These bolts were too short uh, for one thing. So the flange was bent. There was also a bunch of RTV and stuff in here that I had to clean out. So I think I'm going to get a new donut gasket for here, clean up the inside of this a little bit more, and I'm hoping that cleans up that issue. Now check out this other weird one. So I'd be driving along and everything would be great. Love the sound of the exhaust. But if I was cruising like say 45 miles per hour ish, about 4,200 RPM was, was the magic number. It would start to buzz really bad. Like the, the exhaust was like, it was, it was awful. And I couldn't really pin it down. So I had my youngest son get in the car and rev it up to the offending RPM. And I was listening and oddly enough, I found out that these two pipes coming down right here were what they would vibrate and they'd start touching on this header and that they would rattle right in this area. I first tried to like bend it to try to spread it apart and well, that was unsuccessful. And then I had the bright idea to weld it. So I put a small weld in between those two pipes that you can see there. And before you say that my weld is ugly, I agree. <laughs> I, Pulled the trigger on the welder. I'm like, why is this welding so crappy? Well, I forgot to turn on the gas. Uh, I did turn on the gas and got that last bit on there. I've been driving around for a couple of days now and so far it's fine, but no more rattle. But if you have one of these Skunk 2 Alpha pipes or headers and you're having this rattle at 4,200 RPM, check right here. And I don't know if my weld's gonna stress it in some other way, but so far so good. Well, I would say next to new tires, this is the best darn upgrade I think I might have ever done to a vehicle. I do notice seat of the pants power with this. And if I were to guess, I'd say I've at least added 10 horsepower to this car just with this exhaust. Now I went from, well, that one particular section, I'd say it was probably only about an inch and a half to two and a half inch exhaust. So I increased its diameter by about an inch, not to mention the long tube headers and this quality muffler. So. I think I need to stress that part of this quality exhaust upgrade as opposed to not so much. I love the way this thing sounds. I, I love the way it only really makes noise when you get on it, but at idle and everything else, you might hear a low throaty tone, but nothing that's obtrusive whatsoever. I absolutely love this. I'm really glad I did this before I did the rest of the car. It makes the car even more fun to drive this summer. 
Uh, but that said, uh, that mid pipe, that was no joke. I literally burned up two Milwaukee blades. I mean, burned them up. I don't know if you can see the teeth there, but yeah. So one blade per cut. I did two cuts on that B pipe so that whatever Japanese steel that is, it is it's the real deal. I've been driving it around uh, for a couple of days before I decided to do this closing. Now, initially you saw in that clip when I first took it out, there was a whole lot of steam coming out of that exhaust and it was concerning. In fact, I was very concerned. Well, after driving it a little more, it went away and everything is completely fine. So no more steam coming out of the exhaust. I think I can attribute that to the new catalytic converter, which speaking of, I had a check engine light for catalyst efficiency, a PO420 on this car before I did this exhaust. Now that's gone away. So not only have I increased performance, but according to the vehicle's computer, I've improved its emissions as well. So it's a win all the way around. And like I said, I absolutely love what this has done to the car. It's made me very happy. So if you are, are considering doing an upgrade to your Honda, I would suggest a quality exhaust. Um, and if you get lucky like me, you might be able to pick something up used. It might take a little bit of work, <laughs> but in the end, you can get there, you can get there. I'm super happy. Um, anyway, I'll put links in the description to stuff. This stuff was not new. Like I said, I, I bought it used. In fact, I'll, I'll put a link in the description of the video uh, that shows uh, when I got these new parts and a closer examination of them. I will also put a link in the description to airatthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions not covered in this video. So check the description for additional information. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video with the world. Appreciate it when you do that. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you next time.